To delve further into this topic, we have Dr. Rajesh Naidu, founder and CEO of Meldoc, who will enlighten us on how patients and healthcare professionals differ in subjective perceptions of time. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Yeah, hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm not going to take much time. It's going to be short and sweet because it's already like post lunch and everyone is sleeping. Okay, I'm a Dr. Rajesh Naidu. I'm an orthopedic surgeon by profession. Yes, actually, like, you know, everyone are talking about technology in healthcare. And they say technology, technology, technology. Healthcare, like, you know, there is so much of money and like, you know, we have to use technology in healthcare. But what is actually happening in, happening in healthcare? So no one is trying to understand the problem. Yes, technology is good. Doctors will like to use the technology. In past, if you see, like the patient could able to be the center of attention of every visit. In the past, yeah, in the past, the patient could be the center of attention through that visit. Now the doctor is dividing his time with his technology and there is no face-to-face -face contact and eye-to-eye -eye contact with the patient. He has to order with the uh, you know, with the computer, he has to keep paying attention to the computer instead of patient, and there the eye contact is lost, and awkward silence while the doctor is looking up something in the computer. All this causes the challenging communication issues between the doctor and patient. As we have seen, most of you all over here could have gone to a doctor, you have visited, and as soon as you go to the doctor, they'll say like, okay, what is your name? Then he looks up into the computer and he'll be saying, okay, this is your name, okay, what else? Like, you'll be explaining your problems to the doctor, but like the doctor is seeing the computer, but in the past, there was an eye-to-eye -eye contact was there and they see the patient and they greet and they understand and they maintain that relationship. And even the patient is also happy to share, okay, what all has happened to him and how it was there and how to take it forward and what is my cause. Okay, that we are losing nowadays with the technology integration into the healthcare. So, yeah. so there is a declining in the cleaning healing touch. Okay, so as I said, you know the same things. How are we going to change this? how we can bring back the olden glory of healing a patient and a doctor one-on-one -on -one with the use of technologies. Yes, the technology is really important, but we need to use it at the right time. See, first we have very less doctors globally. It is a global problem. Patient-doctor ratio is global problem. It is not like in India we have uh, one doctor for 1,300 people Okay, in US also, there is the same problem. We need to integrate, like, we need to educate more doctors and give it to them and get into the public sector. And doctors does extending hours, like 80 hours per week, like, you know, they'll be working instead of just uh, in developed countries, like, where they need to work only six hours a day. But, like, in India or, like, underdeveloped countries, they need to work, like, 12 hours to 14 hours. And because of this, he's having a lot of stressful and he cannot give a good care to the patient. And the patient is again like going and checking with the other people also. What I have to do it? Okay, why I'm not getting a proper uh, treatment? And excess documentation. Now with all this AI and IoT is coming in and we need to do documentations about the, what is the patient comes in, how to do with that and uh, what all we have to write in that that documentation is becoming more. We need to cut down on the documentation, otherwise we can just keep, now a speech to text is there. 
But in speech to text, what is happening with the doctor says, if this doctor says it's a fracture, but like the text is taking it as a suture, who is responsible for this? Is this the doctor or it's the technology department which it has to be done? So we need to, uh, we need to more incorporate the technology in a better way use for that. And healthcare system, the commercialization of uh, healthcare system has handcuffed most of the practitioners because practitioners now cannot treat the patients properly because of the healthcare where then suing rates are becoming increasing nowadays in, across the globe. So we cannot freely treat the patient and we cannot say like, okay, you need to take this in case if you're not able to do it, again, you need to come back and visit us with the documentation and this uh, commercialization, we are not able to give a freedom of treatment and disturb personal life for doctors. Yes, this is the most important. A doctor is also a human being, like, you know, he has to have his family life and all the things, and at the same time, he has to give the right treatment for the patients, but he is not able to give it. The reason is extended hours, and now with the help of Google, all the patients search their disease in Google and they come to the doctor and they'll say like, okay, I have these problems. Please prescribe me medicines with this. Okay, Google is good knowledge, but like it's not the treatment case scenario. So, and uh, patients also keeps asking, okay, doctor, why is this? Why is that? Like, you know, why are you giving me this medication instead of this, like give me the other medication. Okay, we cannot give it. If you want to take the medications, take it from the Google itself. Yeah, so that is one of the major problems where all the doctors are facing it. And, uh, you know, the technology is also good. Giving more freedom to the patients. At the same time, we should know like where to cut down that technology and incorporate uh, into the other systems. So, how to bridge this? patient and doctor relationship with the use of technology. What does actually the patient wants? He wants to have the medications. Now we have a virtual consultations and IoT devices and uh, smart healthcare devices, all these things. Where before you come down to the doctor, you say like, okay, your everything digitalization has taken place and it is in front of the doctor. But okay, what is it going to do? Okay, now you have a smartwatch, like, you know, it gives you 10,000 pedometers and you have burnt, like, you know, 200 calories. In that case, every day you keep walking 10,000 10, steps, every day you're burning 200, so you should have become slim and fit. So, and with that, it shows, like, the glucometer. The glucometer has been put up, like, okay, your glucose levels are decreasing, and again, it is increasing. So, all these technologies, they're playing it, like, Okay, we are trying to do that problem and everything, but none of the technology is integrated with all this. We want a solution where oh, the technology is good, like yes, yeah, speedometer is good, glucometer, and one trick solution, all these things where it can come into one format. That can be given it to a doctor, and doctor can take that as a reference and cannot give us a treatment based on that. Again, it has to go into the regular diagnostic test and which it has to be taken it up, and we have to convey it to it. And this documentation should be reduced from the doctor's side, because doctor is also documenting it, and the staffing also is documenting it. Everyone are doing the documentation and forgetting the real problem of doctor-patient treatment part. The treatment is coming low because of this. <coughs> yeah, so. Now, the patients actually wants the doctor to listen what are their problems. And they should be available at any time. So now we have a virtual uh, consultation, on-call consultations, and video consultations, and phone consultations, and anywhere globally where we can take it. Yes, the availability of the doctor is the most important because um, once the patient is there with one doctor, they like to see the doctor again. They want to take their opinion over there. At the same time, they want a second consultation also, or second opinion from the other doctor, from a 
different geography so they can get the right diagnosis and the treatment Before we used to build a good rapport uh, with the patients and the doctor, okay, because they spend most of the time sitting over there and talking to them, and the diseases also or treatment, half of the treatment happens in the consultation room by just being with the patient, having an eye contact and hand contact, and talking to the patient. The patient's self satisfaction is the most important. So, with that, we can increase our, you know, uh, the treatment conversation rate also. The technology should be used in a proper way where it can decrease the stress of a doctor and increase the productivity to the patient and even to the healthcare system like uh, hospitals, there should be revenue generation. With the use of technology, most of them like, you know, healthcare systems in the hospitals, they've incorporated EMR systems and lot of the things, but doctors are not techo friendly. They don't know what to do and what to write. So they have to appoint like few more people to enter the documentation into the system. So this should be decreased with the help of some other, uh, you know, technology where it goes in a smoother way. Yeah, so the screen sharing with the patients, most of my patients are like, they said, okay, doctor, what are you doing it? Like, okay, can I show this? So once screen sharing of what treatment they're going to get it or why they're going to get the treatment and based on what. So if you explain some more time to the patient and the patient is really happy that like, okay, because of this, I'm getting this treatment. So that screen sharing mechanism should be there. So the changing paradigm of healthcare. So doctors should have a digital life, like personal assistant, because every doctor having a personal assistance to them, it is very costly affair. Whereas in India, if you say like, you know, a doctor is earning um, maybe uh, one lakh per month, his personal assistant charges will be from 30 to 40,000 rupees. Half of his personal assistant uh, thing goes off. So where, and the, coming on to this healthcare, like healthcare, the backbone of the healthcare is doctor. We are having a lot of technologies, everything based on the, you know, um, patient centric customers and IoT devices and uh, healthcare hospitals. But we are missing the doctor's life. We are not integrating the doctor into the healthcare. We are not thinking about the doctor is the main backbone for the healthcare system. So the technology should start developing from the doctor's view, from the doctor's angle. From the doctor's side, if the technology has been generated and the use of the technology in the healthcare system can be easily accessible to anyone across the globe or all the patients and even the hospitals also, they like to implement it. Because EMR, most of the doctors, not only in uh, developed, not only in underdeveloped countries or developing countries, even in developed countries also, they don't like to use the EMR system still today because it's not about, I don't want to use it. Doctors love to use it. It's about the time taken and what happens, what is the conversation between the patient and the doctor which has happened that is not recorded and once the, it has been entered into the EMR system, it is a cloud generated and where it cannot be changed and some other doctor sees that, uh, okay, this has been done and why you have given this treatment for this. So every doctor's protocol is not there in every country. Some of the countries are like, they don't have a protocol at all. In India, there is no protocol. And in India, they don't treat patients based on the disease. They treat based on the humanitarian grounds. So that is the main challenge. Where in US, they treat based on the protocols, invariably or whatever it is. So if your patient is coming with a 
back pain, they say, okay, take these medications. And in US, they say, like, okay, you need to take an X-ray, and next is an MRI. But in India, we cannot do that. They, we have to give first the patient, like, okay, you have come down with the back pain, now you take medication. If it is not subsided, like, okay, next, after three to four months, then you go and take an X-ray or MRI. That we are doing it on the humanitarian grounds. Once you decrease the stress level of a doctor and put the technology to a doctor, then the technology awareness in the healthcare system, it is very easy. And we are talking about the blockchain and IoT devices, a lot of things. But I would like to suggest, first, let us start building technology for the doctors, make their life easier and go further. So doctors like to work smart. Most of the time, they say like, okay, we want to like take multi-directional ways they'll be going in. And they want to work in the morning, one hospital, they want to go to the one more hospital or clinic in the evenings to earn more revenue generation and to increase the patient revenue, patient generations, that. When the doctor is doing so many things, how to, cut the stress of a doctor and make his work-life balance. So that's why like, we have developed a product called Meldog where it, decreases, it is a virtual personal assistance to all the doctors. It is not only in India, it is a global platform, but we are launching first in India and then we are going for the global. What are the doctors' faces in? What are the doctors' challenges? There are so many things where no one is understanding about the doctor. Every doctor is not like God or any Greek this thing, because he doesn't know complete healthcare system by himself. He may be specialized in one, but he is not specialized in all the verticals of angle. Even in his specialized thing, he cannot give you the precise medication. Sometimes he wants to connect with other doctors and he wants to ask, okay, what to do? What, what is the treatment I should be giving for this? So the networking of the doctors is the most important thing across the globe. Where I've spoken to a few of the people from the US and UK and Australia also. They said like, you know, we are doing this technology and we are doing this problem, we are solving it. But to come down the same technology to India, it will take four years. So if the networking of there, now LinkedIn, we have it. But LinkedIn is there everywhere. Anyone can use it. But it's a LinkedIn only for the network of doctors, only for a group of uh, healthcare people, then they like to share it. Because doctors first, they don't want to come into the social media page because about the technology, about uh, maybe hacking or various reasons. So once if you give them a LinkedIn kind of a network to the doctors, they can share their thoughts and process and they can give a better medications to the patients. Yeah, so it's like, instead of talking on the blockchain and IoT and all these things, let us go back to the same old treatment, how we used to do it. I'll give an example. There was one company called Ring in US. It has become a multi-billion dollar company. The reason for that is, the company didn't change the user interaction of a ring, of knocking the door. They've given a button, a small button outside the room where like you just press the ring and from there you can see a virtually in a mobile app how, who is outside your house. Because the interaction, the user interaction which has been followed for the millions of years, that has not been changed. In the same way, we need in a healthcare system, we should not change the user interaction. Without, you know, uh, taking off the user interaction, what we are facing it, doctor to the patient, and can bring the technology which can simplify all the elements, then it'll be a great way to go ahead. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>